Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about my favorite coffee. So I am a huge fan of coffee. I didn't start really drinking it a lot until I moved out here to Seattle about three and a half years ago. And I'm gonna go over some of my coffee shops I like here in Seattle, but also the coffee I like to make at home. So I have the little machine that's like $99. I bought it from Target, I do believe. And it makes espresso for me. I'm really picky about my espresso though. It doesn't really make the shots how I want them to be. So I've been kind of maybe transitioning away from that machine and when we buy the condo, I might get a different machine, maybe a little like higher caliber that'll maybe make a better shot. But I have kind of been getting into these instant coffees. So we, and that's what I'm currently drinking. It's really, really good. So the one that I really have been liking is this one from Trader Joe's. So this one is really delicious. It's only $1.99 and it has 10 packets in it, only seven grams of sugar. And I've been really trying to watch my added sugar the last like year and a half, because um, they recommend that you try to keep it 25 grams for women, 25 grams or under. And so that I've been really trying to be mindful, not like overly strict. There's many days where I go over that limit because it's very small. All it takes is like one drink, a tiny bowl of ice cream, a dessert, just anything, it'll take you over it over that limit. So um, I really like this one because it's seven grams of sugar in it. And it's just this little packet. You just put it in six ounces of hot water and just stir it and it's ready and it's done. And it's not anything special or crazy. It just tastes good. It's pretty mellow. It's not really, really strong. It's um, not bitter or anything like that. It's just, it's delicious. It's really delicious. So that's what I've been drinking because it has such low sugar and it's cheap, so I love it. The other one that I absolutely really like, is, well of course, is the Starbucks one. So this one's for Mocha. This one does have more sugar and it's like 21 grams. So yeah, not really too fond of the increase of sugar for this one. This one's pretty tasty. Same thing, you add it to about eight ounces of water and this one makes a little bit more of course. It's a little stronger. The thing about this one is it's way more expensive. You only get five packets. I bought this at Central Market and it was over $9 for five packets. So I'm really liking the Trader Joe's for $1.99, 10 of them. I think it's a really good price. And this one, which was in the Airbnb it went, that me and my friend we went on a trip last weekend. This one was in the Airbnb and I really enjoyed it. It's a Swiss Miss Mocha brand. It's really good as well. You put it the packet with eight ounces of hot water and the added sugars are 19 grams, so it's like two grams less than the Starbucks one. And it has a really good flavor. It's very mellow and not like over, I add a little bit of oat milk to it or almond milk to both of those. The Trader Joe's brand, it's a little weaker, so I don't like to add any extra like liquid to it because I think it'll just be too weak. I might actually add an ounce less or so. I think you could. it said you could do like four to six ounces of liquid. But it's really good. It already has like added a little sugar and cream and things like that. Mmm, so yummy. So my favorite coffee shops in Seattle, I really, really like Storyville. So Storyville has an interesting story. They don't really have an about section um, for them. And come to find out, they originally were established by this church that has a really bad reputation, I think, for like money laundering or something with money. A lot of, something went down that wasn't very good. So that kind of turned me off to Storyville, but I reached out to them and they said it is no longer ran, it may still be owned, but it's no longer ran by that group of people that's associated with the Mars Church, which has since like shut down like years ago. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's okay. Cause I like to, support businesses that have causes and support things that I believe as far as like human rights and things like that and people's freedoms. Like that's really important to me. And um, so the thing with that is I don't, it's so hard to tell with a company like that. They're so private. You're not ever gonna be able to find out true information, but I do really like their coffee. They have an amazing coffee. It's so delicious. Their stores are beautifully designed. Definitely a lot of money was put into building these stores out. I actually have uh, an, an article, I'll list it down below, of like my favorite coffee shops. Well, mostly the most picturesque coffee shops in Seattle. 
and it's listed as one of them story villas and the they also make their vanilla syrup completely in-house and they also make an amazing oat milk and uh, I think it's coconut oat milk or almonds something like that I know it's coconut and then one of the other milks it's like a combination they make it in-house and it's phenomenal I love to get the vanilla latte with that coconut milk and it's so delicious but it's really expensive I get a 12 ounce coffee there and a lot of times it's nine dollars and all you know I am on a huge extreme strict budget so this is a place I go to because to me that's like that's like a dinner right there so I only go there every now and then it's like my rare 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 occasional treat to myself that I go and treat myself to a $10 coffee but um, if you're like more on a budget I like to go to a couple other coffee shops last weekend it was a Fremont coffee company that one has pretty good coffee and another one I like to go to that's really close to me is um, the Vienna Cafe. It's so delicious. Their stuff is so good. Now, if you like conventional coffee, coffee like the usual like macchiato or all those types of drinks, they don't necessarily have what you would notice at like other coffee shops, Starbucks. They have coffee that's like authentic from Vienna and they don't let you customize the menu. So however the drink is, is how it's going to be you can't customize it they don't want you to mess it up and things like that so you do have to keep that in mind when you go but i do really like their version of a cappuccino i forget what it was called but it's really good it's really really creamy it's amazing i get it in 12 ounces it's super delicious you can't substitute any type of milk with it you have to do cow's milk um that's something because they don't substitute you can substitute for like the basic stuff but you can't do it for the cappuccino because it has so much foam i don't know if they Think that they can get the same amount of foam and creaminess with an oat milk or an almond milk or something like that and they don't want to mess it up so that's one coffee shop i absolutely love and it's in edmonds it's close to the water and it's called red twig it's really nice they have a nice chai tea there they have some really delicious crepes only thing is usually they have a tiny tiny kitchen and there's only like maybe two people working for i've been going there for years so if you order a crepe sometimes it takes 20 to 30 minutes to get it so you have to go there expecting to spend a lot of time just relaxing working on your computer or doing something like that don't be in a hurry if you go there if you're going to order food the coffee of course is pretty quick oh this is, smells so good i just love the way coffee smells mm -mm -mm. so this morning i went to work out and it's very cloudy today but i've been working out consistently like last week i worked out six days of, i'm not talking about crazy workouts like doing something insane like running or like lifting weight i'm talking like 10 15 minute workout like really tiny basic workouts maybe a couple of boxing on the bag or hitting it or kicking it maybe a couple of belly dance moves some ballet moves some flexibility type moves some rowing little weights like i'm talking basic stuff like that and so I've been doing that. I did it six times, little abs, I did that. Did some at the house, some in the gym, but I worked out six days last week, which was really good for me, because I was doing, it was hard for me to even work out like two days. I've just been really low energy, but I've been taking my vitamin D, which I was low on last winter. So I've been taking that, and I think that's kind of helping me. And also I'm trying to stay really focused. I'm trying to have a plan. I wrote out like a budget. I don't know if any of y'all done this, but if you have like budgets for like different like stages that you want to be in your life like here's my budget for like a bare bones budget like what is the lowest amount i could literally realistically spend bam get that budget and then like okay what's a budget that i would comfortably be able to be at like kind of like the next step up from a super super bare bones budget and have that and then do the next step like what's an ideal budget like where would I really want to be as far as like budgeting and like the things that I want to do and then have a dream budget of this is where I kind of want to be for like it, something that's kind of a little out of reach and but you really are dreaming and wanting to be there and then one that's like really unrealistic but maybe like a really far distant dream, you know, something that you can just look forward to and maybe eventually way off in the future, you will get there. Like I like to do those types of budgets. That way it keeps me focused, keeps me excited for the dream budget of, okay, all these things I could do, all this income I could make. And then I like to kind of create paths for each one. Like, okay, worst case scenario, this is a budget I'm, I'm going to have and this is how I'm going to make the money to pay for it. And then the next step, okay, this is what I could do to pay for that. And then just start kind of like putting those blocks together, those pieces. 
and every day kind of working and focusing on different parts of the puzzle piece to kind of piece it together and that pathway of how you're going to be able to pay for those things for each budget. I just think it's fun. And uh, I'm gonna do a whole video probably later today. I think I'm gonna do a video on like my experiences with investing and things like that. It's something I'm really passionate about and I really want to talk to some people about that. And that's just what I've been doing today. I've been kind of looking at budgets and creating those types of things and kind of creating like flow charts and stuff of like for each budget, like how I could potentially pay for those budgets and what I could be doing now to get there. And I'm kind of losing momentum with the glamping, which is a little unfortunate, but I need to keep pushing forward. I'm just feeling just a little, oh, like, I don't know. I, I guess it's because one of my investors, he has COVID. I haven't heard from him in like a month and a half. So it really has me just like wondering where his head's at, if he's okay, first of all, like if his family's okay, like what's going on with him. And then also if he just has decided not to invest at all or be a partner. And I was really excited to work with him because he already has an Airbnb. He was really cool. I loved his personality and who he was as a person. So I really wanted to work with him. And so it's just a little, I'm a little um, sad that maybe we won't be getting to work together. And then my other two investors are still doing fine. We're still like in contact, we're talking, we're working on things. We're gonna go look at land next month. That's what I'm working on. So I sent out an email today asking all of them like, hey, when's a good time for all of us to go down and like look at land together because I can kind of pick up and go whenever. And well, just not November because I'm gonna see my family in November and probably some of December. And then of course I'm gonna spend time with Jason. But yeah, that's just basically what I've been up to. And uh, let me know in the comments down below like your favorite coffee shops and how, what kind of coffees you like to make. If you like to make them at home, if you like to go to coffee shops. Don't forget to go and like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon, which is all down below, and my Hey Hero account if you wanna ask me questions. I will see all of you in the next video.